humans are not having children the way they used to. In the course of the last 100 years, most countries on earth have gone from every woman having on average 5 or 6 children, many of them dying before reaching childbearing age, to women in most countries having 2 or 3 children, and almost all of them growing up healthy to adulthood and having 1 or 2 children of their own. This development is resulting in rapid population increase. When children are surviving and people are living longer and healthier lives, the population increases. The number of children couples decide to have decrease to around point of reproduction whenever a couple on average have two children. This although happens with the delay of one or two generations and is explained by the demographic transition which we will come back to in a future video. Even though the trend is the same, the change has gone with different speed in different countries. And when states intervene with family planning measures, the decline in fertility rate can go fast. China, in the 1960s, had a population of around 650 million and a fertility rate of 6 babies born per woman. Around a quarter of all children died before the age of 5, and the numbers were especially bad during the so-called Great Leap Forward, an effort by Mao's regime to increase foreign trade by exporting life-supporting crops while nationalizing farmland from private owners and enforcing strict government-set prices on harvest, pushing agricultural outputs out of sync with actual consumption needs and starting the greatest famine of human history. The Chinese government was, much like most of the world, busy fighting a perceived threat of overpopulation, and was with propaganda campaigns trying to establish social norms and reducing the fertility rate of Chinese women. And from 1970 to 1980, the rate dropped from almost 6 to 2.5 in just 10 years. The equivalent drop took for example the United States 80 years, between 1850 and 1930. India did it in 60 years, Brazil in 35. Another nation developing very fast in the Far East, South Korea, did it in 20. Then came the policy of one child. With few exceptions, Chinese families were expected to have no more than one child from the time of the policy going into effect in 1979. The enforcement was conducted on a local level, with great variations of style and intensity, and was using soft weapons like propaganda and social pressure, to positive offers to couples conforming with the system of money, prioritized enrollment in schools for the child, preferable housing opportunities and retirement funds. But also harsh negative impacts on couples deciding to have another child, like forced abortions and sterilization, inflicting physical and mental scars on tens of millions of people. The system also resulted in many children being raised unregistered by the government, just due to them having older siblings and their parents unable to pay the fines associated with registering multiple children for a family. Fines often the equivalent of several years of income. These millions of children are living their lives without citizenship and hence are kept out of education, employment and the opportunity to marry and raise a family of their own. Even though some restrictions have been lifted in the last few years, this is still the reality for many of the children being born out of wedlock or as a second or third child. The one-child policy was introduced in a country with highly traditional gender roles. The preference for many families to have sons, to raise income supporting aging parents and marrying a future wife into the family, led to gender selective abortions and the abandoning and even killing of female infants. This is causing a gender imbalance with millions of girls missing from the population. And still today, there are close to 120 boys for every 100 girls between the ages of 0 and 15 in China way above the world average of 105 to 100. And there are regions and villages where the disparity is even higher. It is worth to mention here that many other aspects of fertility decline is at play, 
like for the rest of the world, female education, a decline in agricultural dependency, urbanization, the decline in child mortality, and female political empowerment. Maybe not so much the last one regarding China specifically, is affecting the fertility rate and pushing it downward, in many countries, rapidly. But the shift that happened in China that have resulted in one of the lowest numbers in the world, a 1.5 or 1.6 children born per woman, has been the reality now for the last 25 years. And the question is, what will happen to it in the future? The population of China is at 1.4 billion people today. But the growth rate is coming to a halt. And the number will start to decline according to the UN median prediction in 2031. India will pass as the most populated country four years before that. The regional divide in China is striking. Almost the entire population lives in the eastern parts of the nation, while the rural regions of the west are sparsely populated and see population losses due to urbanization and perceived economic opportunities pulling migration away from the rural areas. The population is predicted to decrease with 64 million from its peak by 2050 and by the year 2100 down by 400 million to just over 1 billion people. This will put a large pressure on the smaller younger age groups supporting large parent and grandparent generations with a clear reduction in working age population while the older are increasing in share of the total population and living longer lives. The one child policy and the long term low fertility rate of the modern day Chinese society will make the country age faster its median age passing the United States and closing in on its neighbor Japan over the coming decades. Since 2015, the one-child policy is officially scrapped for a more flexible, with Chinese standards, two-child policy. China is once again promoting parents to have children to secure the future working force and economic development, but it is fighting an uphill struggle. A society that has adopted a low fertility number has a tendency to stay low and other factors are working against the Chinese government in this regard. Many factors that has driven the economic development of the last decades, like fast urbanization, an increased cost of living in the larger cities, and a career-focused lifestyle. China is also accepting few or close to no immigrants. And looking at the other nations in the region does not give confidence that the development can be turned around. Japan and South Korea are struggling with low numbers themselves. And in Hong Kong and Singapore, the fertility rate might even be below 1 now. The UN median prediction, mentioned earlier, leading to a reduction of population by 400 million in just 70 years, might even turn out to be a very conservative estimate. Daryl Bricker and John Ibbotson argues in Empty Planet in 2019 that the UN median variant relies too much on earlier experience of neighboring nations, not factoring in the rapid shift in educational development and urbanization, and predicting a slight increase in fertility rate over the coming decades, closing in on point of reproduction, something the authors find much unlikely. The social norms promoting small families with one or two children have, after decades of government interventions, deeply rooted themselves in the Chinese society. Instead, the low estimate by the UN is much more likely to be the case for China. This would mean the population would start to decline in just five years from now, passing under 1.3 billion by 2050 and then be cut in half in the next coming 50 years to just 684 million by 2100.